So we're doing projectile motion. This time we're going to calculate the launch angle. So uh, let's just set up a question. Let's uh, let's put the ground here, right? Okay. So we've got the ground. Uh, let's make like a little little tower that's two meters high, and let's put our particle here, and we're going to launch it from there, and we're going to launch it um, up against this wall here, right? Uh, there's a target here that we want to hit. Now that target is uh, five meters high, and let's say that the distance from here to here is 12 meters. All right, there's my question, and I want to launch this projectile to hit that. Now, if you're a bit of a clever cookie, you might be thinking, well, hang on, there's two ways I could do this. I could launch it up into the air and down, or I could launch it to get it on the way up, and if it was to go past it, it would like start turning over there somewhere. So there's going to be two answers to this question. One where it goes, launches up and hits down like that, and one where it shoots it straight and then keeps coming down. Now that line looks straight. It's not straight. It is curving, right, because it's a projectile, so it's being affected by gravity. All right, so the question that I want is, what is that launch angle or what is that launch angle there's going to be two of them maybe not quite enough information here because i'm also going to need to know if i don't if i don't know the angle i at least need to know its initial velocity all right so let's give it an initial velocity of 42 meters per second all right, that way we can start working with this now because we have an initial velocity. Now, I don't really know how to do this question. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to do it here. Why don't we just write down our equations, acceleration, velocity, displacement, and see what they look like. Acceleration never changes. It's negative g in the j direction. Now, this is our velocity function for any projectile. Now, if you don't know how to derive that, you probably need to go back and watch another video. Uh, but these values here, we know these are our initial velocities so that's 42 and 42. Now finally I probably want some sort of displacement function here. Now before I do that uh, it's important to sort of get a frame of reference here right because my displacement function is going to change depending on where I think my origin is and some people might like consider this to be their origin but that's just going to lead us to a bunch of problems. Wherever possible I'm going to create my origin where my projectile is. So that's going to be my zero, zero. That means that its initial displacement is zero, zero, which means that I don't have to think too much about creating this displacement function. So I have my displacement function here, and this is really what's important. But this displacement function has a t value and a theta value there, so it kind of has two unknowns. Now, I've got this quadratic or this quadratic, both of them are going to be my answers at some point, and they're both meeting at this point, which given I've decided that that's the origin, is actually coordinates um, 12, 3. So what I have is a quadratic passing through point 12, 3. If I could take this vector function and convert it to Cartesian form, that's going to make my life way easier. So let's take uh, this bit. My x coordinate at any given time is 42t cos theta. Let's take this bit. My y coordinate at any given time is 42t sine theta minus gt squared all over 2. Oh, over 2. Um, now I just need to like set maybe this one to t. So if I divide both sides by 42 and cos theta, I get t equals x on 42 cos theta. I'll call this equation 1 and I'll call this equation 2. And now I'm going to sub 1 into 2 for t. Now when I do that I'll get this neat little thing here uh, and you can see the 42's are going to cancel out. Sine theta over cos theta is tan theta so I get this neat little x equals tan, oh sorry, x tan theta. And then this little bit here, well I get uh, g, I get x squared uh, over um, 42 squared uh, cos squared theta um, all over 2. Now I can tidy that up a little bit and we end up with gx squared sec squared theta over 42 squared times 2. Now just quickly the 42 squared and the cos squared theta would both end up on the bottom of our fraction but over cos squared theta is the same as 
sec theta or sec squared theta. So just rewriting it like that. This is our quadratic. I know it doesn't look like a quadratic, but this is x tan theta, right? And tan theta is just a number if only we knew the launch angle. And this is x squared times a number times a number over a number number. It's just x squared times a number. These are all numbers if only we knew the launch angle. All right, so I have a quadratic. It's passing through point 12.3. I have the equation of the quadratic. If I sub 12 and 3 in for x and y and solve that, just using like an equation solver, I should be able to solve it for theta. So here I'm doing that. I'm subbing 12, 3 in. Uh, you can see y is 3, 12, uh, put another 12 in there, 12 squared. Now, if I type that into my calculator, I can do it two ways. I can do like an n solve, just type n solve, type all of that in, and I'll get an answer. Well, I'll get a lot of answers, a lot of negative answers and a lot of positive answers. It'd be up to me to interpret them and understand that, well, I need one positive answer and maybe another positive answer between 0 and 90. And when I type that into my calculator, I too get a lot of answers, and only two of them are between 0 and 90. 15.96 and 88.07. So, much flatter than that, and 88.07, whew, or straight up into the sky. Okay, so um, that's about it. There is another way that you can type this into your calculator. You can sketch y equals 3, and y equals all of that garbage, uh, replacing those with x's, and that'll give you two graphs, and then you're up, it's up to you to interpret where those graphs are intersecting, and they'll intersect at 15.96 and 88.07, which are the answers that we're looking for. Okay, uh, that is projectile motion calculating the launch angle. It is going to be impossible for me to do every single kind of question when it comes to projectile motion, but you need to take all of the skills that you've learned and bring them to bear on projectile motion.